Hello everyone, this is Damon with PixNub Software. In this video, I'm going to be discussing something brand new to Chroma Key Lab 2 and Easy Green Screen 5, and that is the ability to predefine the um, dual mask hair regions prior to running Chroma Key Lab. That way you can run Chroma Key Lab in dual mask, and once you've started it, you can just walk away and let it finish without having to lasso an image and wait for the composition to finish and then lasso the next. And this is done by using alpha channels in Photoshop. You need to have your image saved with an alpha channel called dual mask. And if you do this, then Easy Green Screen will use that for the selection for the dual mask. And this is actually pretty easy to really quickly define all your images with that dual mask or define all the hair regions in your images. But I'm just gonna show you quickly what that does with Easy Green Screen, or what Easy Green Screen does with that. So if we run Easy Green Screen Dual Mask mode, if that channel is there, the dual mask does not stop for us to make a selection. It just loads that channel as a selection. And then you can see we do have our dual mask in here. And I'm going to show you here that I've already got a preset made that I want to use for Chroma Key Lab with the dual mask. And when I'm doing Chroma Key Lab, um, I like to a lot of times use dual mask with presets to just really optimize the extraction settings. And in this case, I'm going to be putting these into a darker background. And so I really want to minimize any fringing or glowing in, in the hair. So I've turned the light and dark hair recoveries down from 50 to 40. And then I've also turned the smart radius down to five. Um, this is enough to give us decent detail on the hair, but we're not trying to get crazy and get too much. And then the main thing I really wanted um, the dual mask for though, or one of the main things was the contract mask. I like to contract the mask by a pixel because that really defringes the edge. But if you're in single mask, that also chops away at the hair and kind of makes it look like that helmet head thing. Um, but when we're in dual mask, we can use this without affecting the hair because this is non-hair region only. Then the foreground recovery, when I'm running batch, I like to run this up at around 50, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, but like in areas of shoes and around anywhere you might have a little bit of green spill, that helps recover that. And that does it only in the non-hair region because this foreground recovery can make the hair look choppy, but by going dual mask, that does not happen. Then the other thing is in the edge hair coloring. When I put the images into a dark background, I usually like to shift the brightness of the edge hairs down because that blends better into a dark background. And then the brightness blending width, I've got it three. So it's three pixels in from the edge of the hair. It's going to darken those by a little bit. And then the, um, the color blend, you can almost always get away with adding some color blend, and this usually works pretty well on any color of hair because it's blending this in a color blend mode so it doesn't lighten or darken the hair. It's just going to add in some color with a hue of 25. I'm using the default here, hue, saturation, and brightness, but this hue of 25, the hue is really what you're, it's getting blended here. Well, the hue and the saturation, but um, 25, just it works pretty well for all hair colors. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and then I'm doing that with 27% opacity with a width of 40. So that's coming in a little bit further from the edge of the hair and it's just kind of blending some color in. And that's just to help with any leftover green spill suppression that the standard spill correction didn't take care of. And these settings usually work pretty good in batch. Now, if you're going into a really bright background, you don't want to use, you don't want to darken the hair. You might need to brighten it a little bit. And these are just subtle things that I like to do to make the extractions as good as they can be. So I'm going to hit exit here, and I'm going to show you how to set up an action so we can easily predefine the um, dual mask for all of the images. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into this channel and delete this. I've already got an action made for it. I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to start over here. And so I've already got an action set I want to put it into. You can create a new set if you want. That's just, a set is just a folder that contains actions. 
but I got one called green screen automation. I'm just gonna make a new action. Call this dual mask channel. You can call it whatever you want, it really doesn't matter. It's now recording. Oh, excuse me, we don't wanna record that yet, very important. What we wanna do is lasso the hair before we, we record it. And the reason why is because we don't want the action to set the lasso. We wanna set it ourselves and then have the action create the mask. And this will make sense in a moment when I show you how we apply this to the images. So now I'll hit record. I'll go into the channels. Just click the new channel button. That made a new channel called Alpha One. We'll select that and call that dual mask. There's no uppercase, it's all lowercase, dual mask. Easy Green Screen is gonna look for a channel with this exact name. So make sure it's exactly like it shows here. And that's it, we can stop our action. That's all we have to do. And I'm actually going to um, I'm actually going to resave this image though before we start because this is one of the images that we're going to be this is one of the images I'm going to show in the batch process it's in that folder so okay now it's saved without the mask okay so moving on now we need to apply this to a bunch of images. I'm only gonna do three here just to make it quick, but you can do it on as many as you want, of course. I'm going to run hot folder. This is another plugin in the master key suite. Now the only way to do this effectively is with hot folder, and it's already remembered the settings I used last time. So I'm just selecting the source folder that contains those images that we want to predefine. No, I gotta select it now because I just deselected it. Okay, I'm going to save in the same folder, that's fine. Now you have to save as a TIFF or a PSD for this to work. You can't save as a PNG because PNG will not store an alpha channel. I'll choose TIFF with the LZW compression because it's a smaller file size and if you're doing a thousand of these, you might want to save some disk space. Um, I'm going to use the original name. Make sure this add to action file name is unchecked or else you'll be adding this name of the action to the end of the file name, which is helpful if you're doing different types of automation, but for this, we don't want it. Now this really can only be done effectively with hot folder, as I mentioned, because um, we want to pause to select that lasso around the hair and then we need our action to run and then to save. Now I've already done this once so it remembered my um, actions. But we've got the green screen automation here, the dual mask channel, and we're gonna save that. And we're gonna pause before that to lasso. And Photoshop's um, batch processors don't have a pause step to be able to do this. That's why hot folder is really the only way to do it. I'm just going to run this here. It brings up the first image. I'm just going to lasso around the hair, hit continue. It now saves that with the alpha channel and brings up the next one. And this is a lot faster than lassoing and waiting for the composition to build in Chroma Key Lab. So if you have everything else automated and the only reason you need to be in front of the computer is to lasso, this is the way of doing it a lot quicker. And that way, when you run Chroma Key Lab, you can just walk away at that point. So what I'm going to do, just go find that. Okay, this is the folder here. Um, it put those in a new folder called Process by Hot Folder. These are the three that I uh, ran the lasso on. I'm just going to rename this um, Dual Mask. I'm going to show you the images. And Windows, it treats that alpha channel as transparency in its display, so it's only showing us the lassoed sections it does this on TIFF images, although they're not really transparent. This is just how Windows is displaying it. No big deal. We're just going to um, uh, go right into Chroma Key Lab here. I'll run the face recognition workflow. And it remembered the last settings I did, which are exactly what I want. 
Do I want dual mask? Dark background too. I'll load a CSV in, although don't know that I really need to for this video, but nonetheless, I loaded it. The source folder, I do need to go in and select a folder called dual mask that contains those images. Save in the same location. All right, so we're going to extract dual mask and we're going to do this without this stopping at all and using that preset. It should uh, rip through these pretty fast. All right, looks like that worked. Let's go take a look at our folder and see if our image is there. Under the dual mask, we now have the chroma key lab folder. Let's open this with the um, photo viewer. And you can see that's a very clean extraction done with dual mask. All of our text was replaced from the CSV file. Our next image actually already dropped in. And if you're just doing three images, yeah, it's not a big deal to um, lasso each one and wait, in this case, 17 seconds. I think this video recording software is actually slowing the computer down a little bit because I usually do the dual mask in oh, 14 or 15. But nonetheless, it, if you're doing three, it's not a big deal. But if you're doing, you know, a thousand images, it's a lot quicker to spend a couple seconds per lasso than to spend, you know, 15 or more seconds per lasso. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you're interested at all in Chroma Key Lab, please be sure to visit our website, that is pixnub.com.